what's up guys welcome and or welcome back to my channel my name is selena and today i'm doing a create a sim plus drama review on the k-drama kingdom i'm going to be creating the crown prince yu chang bear with me i'm not really good at this yet so he might not look exactly like the picture i was having problems while i was, while I was doing it i couldn't find the exact eyes but yeah also uh Spoiler warning, before I start, I would like to warn all those who haven't watched it to stop now and go watch the drama first and come back because I do drop some spoilers that you're not going to want to know if you're really interested in watching the drama. So I suggest you go watch it first and then come back. It's on Netflix and there's only six episodes, so it's pretty quick to watch it. Or you could watch it on, you know, Kiss Asian if you don't have Netflix. Starting off with the first episode, the king had fallen sick for a couple of days and the queen and her family were not allowing the crown prince or any one of the board members to see the king. The crown prince then asked his chief guard to steal the medical book that has the medical records for the king. While his chief guard was getting the medical book, the crown prince went into the king's chambers and notices that some weird shit was happening up in there. So when he returns back to his chambers, his guard shows him the medical record book and while looking over it, they realized some shit didn't seem to add up and so they decided to investigate. They find out that the last physician who had seen the king had left because his apprentice had gotten sick. But in reality, the king <laughs> done nibbled on the poor man, causing him to die. The crown prince decides to go see the physician so he can get some answers. And also, while he's gone, the queen's sanction charges the crown prince for treason and want him dead. Meanwhile, the physician returned to his medical grounds with his apprentice, uh, apprentice who is dead. And one of the guys that was at the medical grounds um, ended up serving the dead apprentice to all of the sick patients, which turned them into zombies. And thus, the fight against the infected and evil politics began. So now I'm going to like break down the characters and... The first character is the crown prince, Yi Chang. He is the male lead in the crown prince, but he is the son of a concubine, so the faction who holds a lot of powers at the time don't really fuck with him. So they are using him committing treason as a way to get rid of him so they, they can have more power. At first, Yi Chang seemed a bit childish to me, but we see him progress and mature into a better leader as he is trying to protect the people in the kingdom. There's one scene that really pissed me off, he was at the medical grounds, right? And he was stuck in the place where the physician's zombie was. And he, they, he was just standing there watching these people turn instead of running out and ended up getting locked up in there with the zombies because he was just standing there and the guard that was in there with him ran out and locked him up in there. Like, he's such an idiot. He was just standing there, like, watching. I was so annoyed. But, like, he's a real stand-up guy and I love him so far. Like, he's, he's a pretty cool dude um next character is Sobi and she's one of the nurses from the clinic slash medical ground who witnesses the patients turn into zombies and also turn the other nurses into zombies as well she hears from the physician that there might be a way to cure all this and it's some sort of flower so she sets out to find the flower but the thing about the flower is that it's also the cause behind all of the people turning into zombies because they use that to turn pe dead people back to life. So while doing this, she joins forces with Prince Yi Chang. At the end, she does find the flower, but the drama ends there. So like, we don't know what's going to happen with her and the flower. I've got to say that I really love her character and she really takes her nursing pretty serious and can hold her own. She defends herself better than some of the guys. Like, there's one scene where, <laughs> oh my god, this one dude, like, they're fighting and he's just, like, they're screaming and shit and she has to, like, 
hack, hatchet down the freaking zombie. Like, this man was so useless. Oh, my God. Anyways, next character is Young Shin. We aren't really given much info on what his identity is other than that we see that he left his injured brother in a very rundown poor looking village and he is made out to have a must do anything to survive kind of attitude everyone has suspicions towards him because he's supposed to be a poor villager but he is really good with the guns so they think he might have been part of some sort of like gang or something i'm on the edge about his character because he did feed all those patients human meat and practically killed them but he is standing on the conference's side for now, and he seems to care. I use that term very lightly about others, and still giving, still giving him the side eye though. Next, we have Muyang, who is the chief, the conference's chief guard. Um, he is one of the very few people on the conference's side, and he is very loyal, as far as we know. He has a pregnant wife who he really cares about. He and the prince are very close. We also see that he sent his wife to some sort of shelter that was helping widowed pregnant women, but there's something fishy going on down there that I think is connected to the queen. So next, we have An Hyun. He is deemed a wartime hero. While the zombies infections were spreading or whatever, he came down from the mountains. He seemed to have been one of the bad guy guys at first, but for now, he is good. The conference seems to trust him because he was there to advise him when he was young and scared. And also, there seems to be some sort of animosity from Yangshin towards Anhyeon, which has to do with his war title. And while I was looking at, like, comments about the show, people seem to be suspicious of him and his, like, followers because it's like, when they were fighting the zombies, it's like they've seen it before. Like, they knew how to handle themselves, they knew how to fight them and whatever. So, people are suspicious that they, that he could have been a part of making zombies before this outbreak ha happened. Like, there's something that's being hidden that he was a part of that we don't know yet. Hopefully, we will see it in the next season. So next, we have Ju Hak Ju. This evil ass bitch ass nigga. Oh my god, he's so stupid. I hate him. Anyways, he is evil as fuck. Wants to take over the kingdoms. So he placed his daughter next to the king and is hoping to take over the throne through her pregnancy. Well, not hoping. Like, basically, he runs shit because the king is dead and he's a zombie. So they're just using him for show and for clout. And now the some of the cabinet members know that the king is a whole ass zombie um yeah uh the man is out to personally get the crown prince now because his son's head was cut off when he turned into a zombie and attacked the prince also it seems as if he might be wanting to make more zombies since he there's a scene where he was where the, the this prisoner was fed something and then he turned into a zombie and bit the other prisoner and turned him into a zombie and it seems as if that Ju Hak Ju is like making a zombie army or something. And also, when he went to the city after locking up, blocking off the the other the other cities because they had the infected, he brought one into the place where he went. Like that was very suspicious. I was like, what is this man doing? Honestly, um, this man's plotting seems to make no fucking sense to me because it seems as though he wants to release infected people out and infect everyone, but I guess maybe he's doing this for population control. That's the only thing I can think of, him bringing those zombies. Maybe he's doing it for population control and for fear-mongering, maybe, because he wants to control the people by saying, by having zombies and being like, oh, if y'all don't follow my rule, I'm going to release these zombies or whatever. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Or maybe because his son is dead now, he doesn't really give a fuck and is out to kill literally everyone. Like, Or maybe it's his backup plan since the queen's pregnancy may not seem to be seem reliable to him. All I have to say is this man's an idiot. His son literally died because of him. If they did not... Make the king a fucking zombie. There was no way for that apprentice to get bitten. And then him going back and turning all those people into zombies by them eating him. And then his son going there to arrest the guy 
would not have gotten bitten by the physician who was turned into a zombie as well, turning his son into a zombie. And the crime prince had no choice but to kill him. It's not like he could talk to him. Like, your son was literally infected already. And the, the crime prince had nothing to do with the people turning into zombies. This was all you, my nigga. Like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. So, next character, we have the queen. And she's an evil ass planless bitch like her dad. And is pretending to be pregnant and has sheltered some widowed pregnant women and is killing them off when they deliver girls since she needs a son. And like I said before, with um with Mu Yang, his wife is one of the people at the shelter where all the pregnant women are. All the pregnant widows are. So I don't really know what she's wanting to gain. Maybe she's scared of scared her dad might kill her. Like, who knows? I kind of feel bad for her because she is doomed if she's good and she's doomed if she's bad. So, like, she's basically doing what she can do to survive. But still, like, I think it's super cool that she has these pregnant women in that place. And if they don't give birth to a son, she just kills them off. Why not just let them go? Why does it... What, what's the point of killing? I don't understand why she kills them because they delivered a daughter. Like, that makes no sense. They don't even know what's going on. Like, honestly, I don't understand that part. Like, why not just let them go and then bring on the next person? And, like, I don't get why she kills them. Oh, my God. That's why I think she's an evil-ass plot and bitch because that part, I'm like, what? Why is she killing them? They don't even fucking know that they're there to give birth to a son for her. Like, all they... It's so dumb. So, if they give birth to a son, they're gonna die. If they give birth to a daughter, they're gonna die. And on top of that, they kill the babies as well. Like, what? Anyways, so next we have Jobam Pal. And this bitch ass... (laughs) He is a kind of, like, a wimp. He was a top-level officer. His... His first day promoted, people turned into zombies. Like, it was it was insane. Like, I mean, I don't know what I would do. I would denounce the fact that I'm any type of leader. But then again, him, him being um, a lead officer would have helped him to stay safe because it would protect him more if, as it, if he, instead of, like, running off, I guess. Because, like, you're a top officer, right? But, like, anyway, Sobi saved his life a whole bunch of times. And, like, for some reason, he now likes her because she keeps saving his life. But she also diagnosed him with gonorrhea. So, I don't know how far that... I don't think she's interested in him, to be honest. And then, um, he is also trying hard to redeem himself in front of her because of the fact that he abandoned them. To go uh, to get on a ship with all the all the noble people, and I think he might be a little bit of like comic relief, even though like I don't know, I didn't find anything that funny in the show. Like it was pretty, like maybe he was there to just like give us some light moments because there's a lot of death, and the show is pretty dark, so we do need some light-hearted moments at at times. But, yeah, so those were the characters that so I feel like I only spoke on these characters because I feel like that we're going to see them in the next episode. I mean, in the next season, because there are other characters, but they died, so I don't know. But we'll see, like... All right, so one thing I have to say is the noble men and women were so annoying in the show. Oh, my God. Like, there's no way rich people are this stupid, to be honest. Like, oh, my God. Okay, so first, when they found out that people were infected and turning into zombies, the nobles were refusing to let their dead children who are infected be burned or have their heads cut off because they were noble like oh my god i was like bitch they're fucking zombies and when they become active again they won't care whether you're the mom their dad uncle aunt brother sister or cousin you're gonna get eaten like what the fuck honestly like there's one scene 
where this lady ate her child. Like that was that was scarring. I did not need to need to see that. Like they didn't show it, but like you could tell. Like the girl comed up, the mom turned into a zombie, and she's like, "Mom, what are you doing? You're scaring me." And like you know, she got gobbled up. And then second, we had the noble woman. She was she's the main one who was saying, "Oh." Don't cut up our children because they're noble or whatever. They're like, you can't do that. You have to be respectful. So she ended up bringing her zombie son her onto the boat where they were escaping from the infected people and all the noble snakes that were on that boat, including the officers or whatever, all ended up being infected except for Jabon Pal, who somehow escaped. I don't know how that nigga escaped, like... It makes no sense. Lastly, we had the noble men complaining about having to strap up to protect themselves. Like, seriously, bro, fine. Just just stand there and die then. Because I'm not going to fight for you if you're not going to fight for yourself. You're not injured, you're not old, and you're not a child. Even the children will probably try and protect themselves. Like, come on now. This is not the time. They were so irritating. And then one thing I've got to... Yeah, they were so irritating. One thing I've got to ask is why are zombies in Korea so freaking fast and overpowered? Like, it's ridiculous. Like, these shits are faster than me. Like, <laughs> if I was in a Korean zombie movie, I would be the first person dead. Like, nah, there's no way running away from these people. They're so freaking fast. And then, at least they were weak. Du- at least they were weak during the day, but now we know that. They're not weak because of because of night or day or whatever. Which at first I did find kind of strange. I was like, um, that makes no sense. Like, wouldn't zombies just be active, like, 24-7? They don't need to sleep or anything, so why would they be hiding? So, it turns out it wasn't night or day that was affecting them. It was the temperature. But, like, that also confuses me as well. Because it's like, so what's the temperature strain- change? Is it getting colder or is it getting hotter because if it's getting hotter wouldn't that make them weaker so is it getting colder but it seems as if spring is coming to me so i was really confused like that part's confusing me so is it getting warmer or colder like i would like to know we'll probably know in season two i literally cannot wait also when season two comes I wonder what's going to happen to the king. Like, are they going to be able to cure him? Because Sobi did find the flowers, but she's with with, um, weak-ass Jobon Pal. So how's she going to escape? Because I know there's zombies around them right now. So what are they going to do? Oh, my God. Or is it just one zombie? Like, oh, I have so many questions. That ending, bro. Also, what's going to happen to all the bodies in the palace waters? Because we did see that when the zombies get into water, they look, they they all drown. Like, they kind of turn into stone and just, like, poof, fell, to, fell to the bottom. But with this temperature change, wouldn't the, temp- the temperature of the waters change? So, would that affect the way they are in the water? So... Will all those uh, dead bodies slash zombies in the palace waters, will they get up? Like, I'm so intrigued. Also, the only negative I have with the show is why they had to kill that little girl. Like, bro, they showed her to us, her surviving her mom, like, not her sister and everything, only for her to get killed by those Stupid ass palace guards. I was so cheesed, bro. Like, why couldn't they let her leave, live? Like, oh my god. I found that even though it was a historical drama, the political aspect of the sh- of the show didn't really drag it down a lot because because maybe it's because it was like six episodes, that, so they didn't want to like force feed us too much political information. Considering the main problem of the show right now is are the infected zombies and also the the what's his name Ju Hak Ju and his evil planning with the zombies so i think that's what they're trying to show us because po- politics at this moment don't 
I feel like don't really matter, but would they? Because wouldn't they care more about other rich people? So they will try to save only the nobles. So what's going to happen to the poor people? My God. I was honestly so mad when I finished the drama because I wanted to continue watching. Especially with that ending, bro. Like, oh my God. I just want more. Like, I have so many questions after that ending. But, like, I give this drama a 10 out of 10. Well, the first half anyways, because that was really good. And for those who didn't listen to my warning at first, at the beginning, and didn't go and watch it, and are all the way at the end right now, all I have to say is, if you want a thriller, if you want suspense, if you love historical dramas, and if you love zombies, I suggest you go and watch this drama because, like, oh my god, it was so good. And it has everything. So, yeah, I suggest those who haven't watched it yet to definitely go and watch it. And for you guys, it's even better because season two is coming up. So once you're done it and you want more, more is coming. I think it's coming out next month. I don't know, but I think I'm going to be reacting. I'm going to be watching the trailer to see when exactly it comes out. So I'm excited. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. And I know, again, that my sim doesn't exactly look like the guy, but I try my best. And I'm not, and like, this is like, what? I've only done like four other characters before. So I'm just trying to get used to creating sims right now. So, but yeah, if you did like my review, please thumbs ups. Thumbs ups. Thumbs up and leave a comment down below and also subscribe to my channel. I would also like to know your opinions on the drama down below and what are your theories like. Let's discuss it in the comment section. Bye. La, 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 la.